I'm Achi Ujani Alai. Um, just finished my role in Kenya as a regional minister for tourism, culture and sports, uh, which I had for the last five years. For this particular conference, I'm here as a moderator, again, in the space of tourism. So one of the sessions I'll be running this afternoon is looking at how do you build capacity so that you get employees joining this sector. This sector, whereas it's, uh, it's quite a sexy, if I could call it that sector, what it lacks is consistency for the employees. It's a very seasonal space, tourism and travel. Um, and as well, the pay isn't the greatest. Tech seems to be the big thing and every kid and uh, adult seems to want to go into that space. But this is the sector that is a human to human sector. You can have all the tech around the world. You can jazz up your social media pages and you can take the best photographs. But this is about human interaction. So the employers, in my opinion, will have to make sure that they have an appealing factor for why a student who's about to join university or a college course would want to join this sector. Because they're thinking, I'm gonna be mistreated, I'm gonna work long hours, um, and now I'm used to flexi time and coming to work when I want and I can do it virtually and why should I go into this sector? So I reckon that some of the comments that are gonna come out of my session this afternoon will have to focus on how the employer now long, no longer has um, the, the, the upper hand. After COVID, it's the employee that has the upper hand. And so how are employers going to adjust to make sure that people do want to join this sector? And I think it needs to go right down into education. Right down at primary school. I mean, it's not taught in school. All you get is maybe your parents take you on holiday, and, but you're not ever thinking that I want to join that space. So it might start with uh, you know, prep schools, primary schools, moving into high school, becomes ingrained in the curriculums of the different countries. And then when students are ready to go into college, into universities, they're already aware of it. You know, their children know about medicine from age six. They know engineering, they know tech. Does anybody know tours and travel? Yeah, but yet we all experience it. So that's gonna be a big one, that employers are no longer the top dog. This has been flipped on its head. And then also that the tourist, be he, she, a tourist for leisure, for business, like we are here in uh, Jamaica, um, ecotourism, volunteer tourism, sports tourism, uh, adventure tourism, agro-tourism, all these people who fall into these different specialities are a very picky lot. They've got their money, they have a plan, and they don't want you to deviate from it. For example, seamless co uh, connections as you try, like we were doing, to coming into the Bahamas. You've got to go through Europe or you have to go through the US and coming here. Seamless travel. Um, things like losing luggage cannot be part of the tourism experience because the tourist is nitpicky and more importantly the tourist has a mobile phone and will tweet and post any small element of um, you know disadvantage that might have befallen them and make it massive and that just there you lose um, a, a destination that's done a lot in terms of marketing itself just like that you can lose that so the tourist the employee sit above the employer, in my opinion. So it'll be interesting to see what the panel will pull out today. And what's your view if uh, one of the panel talks about sort of the, the, the cost of that? Where is, where's, where's the money gonna come from yeah. to do that? Because obviously you, we all want to uh, uh, pay our, 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 our most important yeah. asset, which is our human, yeah. but where's, where's the capital? How do we do that when there's right. this continuous kind of downward pressure on, on costs from a, from a yeah. traveler perspective? I, I think governments are going to have to play a very strong role in ministers of tourism and this space, this creative tourism culture, sports space, are going to have to push their leaders to give them significantly more budget, because that's the issue. Budgets do go into other uh, high demand areas. Um, you know, it could be the environment, it could be water, it could be you know, land, it could be education. But how are you going to get revenue into your country if you're not going to put the money into it? And the only way to get the money into it is to go to parliament, the ministers, go into parliament and put their case. And also the, working in collaboration with the ministers of tourism, with the ministers of ICT, with their partners, the ministers of culture and sports, and together sort of ganging up, if it were, and saying, in order to bring revenue, in order to bring in traffic into our country and generate income and boost the economy, we're going to have to put the money first. And the money is the government 
of each country prioritizing this space called tourism, which oftentimes in many countries is not the priority. So I think it will start there. I think also the education department starting to teach from an early age about tourism, about inter-cross-cultural um, interfaces and making it look uh, like a, like a, a go-to career to pursue. So that's what I would say. That's a, that's a great answer to my question. Um, you talked about seamless and yes. you, you talked also about sort of consistency as well and yeah. that being absolutely you know, key. key, right? Mm. But how do you do that at a, at a kind of global level? Because what we can't have is this you know, kind of national sort of silo yes. kind of approach, yes. right? So how, how do we overcome right. that challenge? I, I think COVID just gave us a perfect excuse to co-partner, to collaborate and stop the competitive nature that perhaps had prevailed prior to um, COVID. COVID just gave us an excuse to pay attention to a problem we knew was coming. Mm -hmm. So I think it's about partnerships. I mean, if you're flying out of New York or Miami into the Caribbean, so it's the, the governments here talking to the government of the United States and doing partnerships there or talking to governments in the Middle East if they want flights to come in direct from the Middle East. So it's no more silos. Silos do not exist post-COVID. You will die. So it's about um, ministers of government, tourism stakeholders starting to have real interactions with their counterparts across the globe. Because that's the only way. But before COVID, people were very territorial. Mm -hmm. This is my space and this is how I do it and welcome to my country and it's my way. And the tourist is saying, I've got a phone. I can bring you down in five minutes. I'm savvy and I'm picky and I want seamless travel. So it's collaborations and uh, um, a codependency on each other so that the universe is working, the planet and the people work as, young, as one. And I think the younger generation are saying, we don't want to work for organizations that are in silos. We want to look after our environment. What is your organization, your hotel or your airline doing for climate change, for you know, educating the disadvantaged or whatever? So the employers and the government is now going to have to be a lot more attentive to, in my opinion, to the tourist, to um, the young adults who are coming through the system and uh, making sure that this sector remains on top of its game going into the future. That's my take. And from what you see, can you point us to any examples of who's doing this? Yeah. Who's setting the bar? I can. I, I, I would say uh, the Middle East, for example, during COVID, we saw that I think it was Emirates. They were in the skies. They adapted as the, week by week. They were on it. Um, they're one of the countries who just said, we have a problem, it's not going away, we move, what are we doing? They went into cargo, they went into offering, um, I flew with them in the middle of COVID and they were offering um, insurance packages, buy your ticket and we insure you for death, for this, for that, for that, we'll bring your family if you happen to be sick when you come into our space. Um, so for me, Emirates Airline was on top of its game. Another one, if I talk about a country, would be uh, Rwanda. You walk into Rwanda, and from the immigration officer to the baggage guy, the porter, the, the, it's seamless. They talk one story about their country, they've got data, they've got information, the population, the size of which mountain and what they do, they've got their history that they can share with you. Seamless. So in many destinations you find gaps. You would ask in a certain country, oh what's the population of your country? Maybe the taxi driver. He's not sure. Or what's the biggest mountain or whatever. Uh, what's the best hotel? Still operating in silos, you will not make it. The Rwanda story, for example, in Africa, that's a, that's a brilliant one. Last question, really. We've talked a lot about education, yeah. uh, but we've come at it at the moment, I think, really from a, from a kind of, you talked about primary and secondary and so forth. But what about those populations that are aging, that, yeah. have, that have skills and, and, and talent yeah. challenges? Yeah. How, do, how do we kind of approach yeah, that's that? One. That's a good one. And, and food for thought, really. But what I would opine is we can't leave them out. They've journeyed the journey. They need to be made consultants for government or advisors in this sector. Many other sectors bring people with 30, 40 years experience in as advisors, consultants. And we don't, we t in this sector you tend to reinvent the wheel with a brand new team. So I think it's bringing them back on board, even after they've retired or they've left, but they want to contribute to their country's economy and this tourism space, and bringing them back, bringing them into lecturing and teaching in the schools as industry experts. That's another another space we could use them but not to let this go and um, yeah somewhere in all of that tourism is still resilient we need to be agile we need to be thinking on our feet all the time the Emirates story and it bounces back because human beings need to see other human beings need to experience different foods cultures music dance fashion so it's us to make sure that we hone it and make it um, bulletproof 
if I may. We've seen you today. Thank you very Thank much. You Good luck very with much. the panel. Thank you, Justin.